Hello and welcome to section 7, Creating and Managing Writable Volumes. In this section, we're going to concentrate on how to create and manage your writable volumes. So what are we going to cover in this section? In this section, we're going to focus on the aspects of creating and managing writable volumes. We will start by creating our first writable volume and then demonstrate what that looks like from a user's perspective. We will then look at some of the management tasks, such as importing and updating writable volumes. Before finishing off our look at the management tasks, we'll also discuss rescanning, editing, disabling, and then finally deleting writable volumes. Before we get on to creating our writable volume in the first video of this section, we're going to take a few minutes just to talk about the process. In this section, we're going to follow three distinct steps, create, assign, and use. So let's take a look at the creation process for building a new writable volume. This is shown on the diagram that you can see on screen now. The process for creating a writable volume is far simpler than that used for creating app stacks, as you don't need to provision or install any applications up front, or have any provisioning machines in place, or have to then configure assignments as a separate task. It's simply just a case of creating a writable volume from one of the three standard templates, which we will cover later on in this course, and then assigning which user or group you want to assign the writable volume to. The end users can then go ahead and install their own applications. So as you can see on the screen, we start by creating a new writable volume. We select a user group or machine that that's entitled to or assigned to. We select the template and then we deploy it. The writable volume is then attached when the user logs in or reboots and then is available for immediate use. So now we understand the process for creating a writable volume, the diagram on screen currently shows the process in a more graphical representation. So now we understand the processes behind creating a writable volume, we can now move on to the first video of the section and we can start to create our actual first writable volume. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a writable volume for a user. So what are we going to learn in this video? We're going to take a more detailed look at how to create our first writable volume. Just as a quick recap, we're going to create an empty container and then we'll assign it to one of our end users so that they can then install their own applications into that container. So now let's go ahead and create a writable volume. From the App Volumes Management Console, after logging in, we're going to click on the Volumes tab and this time we're going to click on Writables as we're going to create a writable volume. Here is our writable volumes page and you can see here that we currently don't have any writable volumes created. So let's now create one by clicking on the Create Writable button. The first thing we need to do is choose who this writable volume is going to be for. We're going to choose a user from Active Directory, which could be either a user or a group of users. So the first thing we're going to do is from our domain drop-down box, we're going to click the drop-down and we're going to select our PVO Lab domain. Then we need to search for our user. We're going to use Bob Cooper, so type in Bob and click Search. Now we see our user Bob Cooper, we see that his status is available, i.e. he's a valid Active Directory user. So we're going to click the box to select that user. Next we need to select the destination storage. So where is the writable volume going to live? In this example, in the example lab, we're going to use our local data store. Then the destination path we're going to leave as the default cloud volumes slash writable folder, which is hosted on our VMFS storage data store. Then we need to choose a template. These are the templates that we uploaded when we installed App Volumes. We chose to upload two templates, the template for UIA only, so user installed applications only, which is a 10 gig template. And we also uploaded the UIA plus profile template, so user installed applications plus user profile data. We're not going to include profiles, so we're not going to give the user a user installable VMDK file plus profiles. We're just going to give them a standard writable. So we're going to select UIA only. We then have a couple of options. Here we have prevent user login if writable is in use on another computer. So if they have logged into another computer and the writable volume is already in use, if they then try to log into another machine, then the writable volume won't come across to the new machine they log into. So we're making sure that they are attaching it to one computer. This is especially important if you do use it for user profiles. Otherwise, the profiles are going to get out of sync and end up as a horrible mess. The next option is to limit the attachment of the user writables to specific computers. So if we check that option and type in the name of a host, then that's the computer that this writable volume will be attached to. 
So in this example, for it was our DC, then we would type in DC. So that means that the writable volume will only be attached to that specific computer. So the use case here is maybe a user has two writable volumes with different types of apps and you want them to attach to different desktops. So maybe a high spec graphics desktop with grid technology configured, so therefore a bigger desktop spec than you would need to attach to another application that didn't require that specification. We're going to leave this option unchecked in this particular example, so we're only going to use any desktop. The last option is to delay writable creation for Group OU members until they log in. As we said at the beginning, you can actually assign writable volumes to a whole group or OU, so lots of users in effect. If you do that, it saves time, but if you have hundreds of users in that particular group, then that volumes is going to go and create hundreds of writable volumes all at the same time, which could potentially give you some storage performance issues. So you might want to delay the creation if you know that these groups are going to be quite large. If you check this option, then the writable volume will only be created when that user logs in. We will leave this unchecked and then we're going to go ahead and create our writable volume by clicking the create button. You'll see the confirm create writable volumes pop up box. So create writable volumes on the local data store in the cloud volumes writables folder and that will be created for the entity that is our user and that user is Bob Cooper. We can create this in the background or create immediately and then we can click on the create button. We'll see the writable volumes being created and then when we go back to the writable volumes screen we can now see listed our owner which is Bob Cooper created on the local data store. Don't know how much disk space is free yet. It's enabled and currently it's detached meaning that he's not logged in. So let's switch over to a desktop and log in and see what happens on that particular user's desktop. So here we are on a Windows 7 desktop and we have logged in as the user Bob Cooper who we've just attached the writable volume to. As you can see nothing really seems to have changed except for if we look in the disk management console we can see that as well as having a C drive he now has a 10 gig CV writable E drive. So when he goes to install his applications, he can redirect those into this virtual disk. If we now switch back to our app volumes manager, so back at the management page, we can now see that our disk free is now showing at 98.67%. It won't show 100% as there are a few files that were already within the template of the writable volume that enables writable volumes to actually work. So things like the drivers, etc. But we can see it's enabled and it is attached to the user. If we expand, we can see the extra details and that's successfully created our writable volume.